Teachers have great power and great influence. I mean, a casual comment from a teacher can completely change the direction of a child's life. A teacher can look at a child and say, what is your problem? You're worthless, and it's going to change that child's life, and that child's going to live that out. Or a teacher can say, great job. Now, I know you can do better, but you did a great job, but I know you're, you're, that's great, and it will change that child's life. The child will either bloom or that child will be crushed. James, in the beginning of chapter 3, begins talking about teachers. We're going to do the first two verses, James 3, 1 and 2. He's warning them. He says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. These verses are hard for me as a pastor to to kind of grasp because one of my spiritual gifts is teaching. I can teach. But what James is saying here is he's saying that, you know, we're going to be judged more strictly as teachers. Jeff, who teaches a youth, are going to be judged more strictly than others. Even Bethany, who works at, with kids in a preschool like situation, she's a teacher. She will be judged stricter than somebody who doesn't, even at that small age. So that, you know, for me, first of all, that kind of, that kind of makes me apprehensive at times to teach. Because, as James says, I stumble in many ways. I make mistakes as a teacher. I need to be careful because I have to give an account of what I taught. That's the first thing that worries me about these verses. The second thing that worries about me these verses is James is basically saying, you don't, not everybody should want to be a teacher. You know how hard it is to find people to teach in the church today? Just ask Beth. How hard it is just to find somebody to substitute for one day. It's difficult to find people who want to teach. Sometimes it's impossible. But you kind of understand what what James is saying here. If we go back to what Jesus said in Mark 9.42, he says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. I want you to think about this. If you're teaching young children, if you lead them in the wrong direction, it is better that somebody comes along, puts a huge stone around your neck, and you're thrown into the ocean. It's better that you drown than for you to lead a young child astray. That puts a lot of pressure on teachers of children. That is one reason why James says what he says. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers. You see, I don't think he's trying to make it hard on us to find teachers. That's not his point. He wants to make sure that we're teaching for the right reason, that our heart is in the right place. You see, what James was dealing with, the the first early church, they inherited what the Jewish synagogue was like. They inherited synagogue worship. And in that worship, very similar to the way the Quakers were, but they're kind of getting away from this. What we would do, if, if we were a early church, we would all come in, we would sit down, and somebody would get up and share a word. They would actually allow people to come up here and share a word. What did Jesus do when he was, at, he was back in his hometown? He came up, he opened the scripture, and he shared it. He read it, but then he added to it. Today, this has been fulfilled in your presence. (laughs) He's basically saying, Isaiah was talking about me. That's me. And that is the fear and the danger that the church has had, is you don't know what somebody's going to say. 
you don't know what's going to happen. And it's hard because James is dealing with this in the church. And apparently who he's writing to, there were people who were getting up and saying things they probably should not have said. And what happens is, in the early church, people began to see these people who were teaching and who were teaching correctly, and they began to envy them. I doubt if there are many people envy me today. In fact, I've had people tell me, I don't envy you. Pastoring and teaching is not easy. It's a calling. It's not easy. But they begin to envy Because this was put a place of honor. Rabbi means teacher. And you didn't just call anybody teacher. When you called somebody, when Jesus was called rabbi, that was elevating him to a place of honor. And the people in the early church, they wanted that. Some of the people wanted that. So they would get up thinking that they could do it too. And they couldn't. And it created discord. And it created trouble. Because they said things they shouldn't have said. 